Welcome back to another video everyone. Today we are back at Mike's shop. We are retuning the drift truck now with a working intake manifold valve and we are now going to be adding the VVT. So VVTI. Truck is already loaded on the dyno. Everything should be good. We're going to start off by doing some baselines. Last time we made 260 torque, 260 horsepower at the wheels. So hopefully we'll make around that and then we'll start start cranking it up i'm hoping for like 280 torque and like 265 horsepower what do you what do you think you think that's pretty pretty reasonable yeah i think that's gonna be good i think that the main difference is gonna be like low end torque yeah away yeah. from peak all yep. the stuff where you'd normally initiate is gonna be a huge difference so yeah oh, it should be pretty cool how do you know like what to do with bvti you just kind of play with it yeah so what we're gonna do is after we do some baseline pulls I'm gonna dial in the crossover point for when your intake manifold butterflies are gonna open and close. Uh -huh. And then after that, we're gonna just add some, some of the VBTI in, in incremental changes, and then just check the torque graph and see where it ends up. We might still have to shift the opening of the butterflies after that to adjust for the VBT gains, but we're gonna just gonna start with a baseline, just kind of see, you know, based on our readouts, what, what works and what doesn't. All right, we'll do the first baseline. All right, first baseline, until we make the same amount Power and My truck's too loud. It's painful. and see if my intake actually lost horsepower. We were like 20 horsepower down from the, our final run last time. The only thing I really changed was the intake. I did add power steering. I don't know if that would do much. It actually would. It's a bunch of parasitic loss. Yeah. Take 20 horsepower though? It seems unlikely. Yeah. lost us 30 horsepower. 30, 30 horsepower. It just made 273 horsepower, 273 pound feet. That's what makes dinos so cool. It's like, we saw that it was making 20 pound feet less. We took off the intake and it made 30 more horsepower and torque, it's, it's insane. So it turns out that one pull where we, we made a bunch of power without the intake off was just a fluke. We did some more pulls without the intake and it made 240 horsepower. Then we put the intake back on, made the same amount, put the filter back on, made the same amount. So we're at a baseline of 240, I think six, 242 horsepower torque. Let's get to the fun stuff of increasing horsepower. Although probably by the end of this, we're just gonna be at the same number we were last time. Naturally aspirated cars aren't as fun because you can't just push a button and make a bunch of power. Intake butterfly valves now plugged in. Take a good look at the torque curve right now. Did you set it up? Um, I think so. I gotta see if I did it right or not. <laughs> it seems like it though, because it's running lean. So I'm just gonna mess with the RPM limit right now of the butterflies to make sure that they're working the way we want them to. Yeah. And then, start running it on the dyno and see where we need to actually have it set at.
20 foot pounds of torque. Oh. And lost about 10 horsepower. All right, so, so it's working. Yeah. Cool. So now we'll we'll adjust this a little bit based on what the graph reads, and we'll see what happens. So is that like that top line? That's the, how much we gain right there. Yeah, and that's with the fueling being way off. That's like 30 more than what it was without the power steering. Right. Without any additional tuning. So that's awesome. Yeah. Intake switch is definitely working, so that's awesome. We need it to be closed while just driving around. When you floor it, it opens, and then when it gets to high RPMs, it closes again. We're just trying to figure out exactly how to tune it in the ECU so it does what we want. All right, now let's do this like we meant to. Uh, that's so stupid. <laughs> he overlooked something silly, but he figured it out, so it's all good. All right, let me get the car warm, and then I'll do a pull. <laughs> was when it wouldn't open back up at the top. All of this torque right here was glorious. Yeah, that's not really good. Any top end. So what was the peak horsepower, peak torque for the last run? Uh, 251, which is about the same. Uh-huh, and, and 271. In the middle here is the media area. Yeah, that's huge. It's like yeah. over 2,000 RPMs too. It's not just for a little bit. Yeah, it's from 3,000 to 5,000. It's like a massive belt. Yeah, so that's sweet. Now we're gonna mess with PBT. So we were having some issues getting the uh, cam timing to adjust itself. So there's a chance that one of the actuators bad. So we'll look into it. We're gonna get some food. Then we'll we'll get back into it. Right now with just the uh, the valve working, we gained about 30 pound feet peak. A bunch in the area, a bunch of horsepower in that area, and then our peak horsepower is about the same as it was. So the reason why it's making 10 less horsepower than it was last time is because the power steering, the parasitic loss from that. It sounds like it has a lot more horsepower than 250 horsepower. It sounds gnarly, but it only makes 250 horsepower. But that's still, that's still a decent amount of power in a 2,600 pound truck, so. Unfortunately, no auto parts store had the new VBT solenoid, and then I ran out of time, so. That's it for this dyno sesh. I forgot to tell Mike that it wheel hops really bad if you spin while going straight, but I'm sure he's about to find out. <laughs> Oh, he totally just locked it up. <laughs> that was probably a scary moment. Yeah, it probably was. <laughs> for him. <laughs> Feel better? Yeah, it's definitely better. No weird jumps or anything cool. like that. Just bouncy. Yeah, it is definitely very bouncy. <laughs> I got on the brakes at the top of the hill going this way. We, we heard. And it was like, shh, shh. I was like oh, okay. <laughs> so good for drifting so much so much better the truck feels pretty similar as it did before up top it feels about the same but down low right in the mid-range it pulls much much harder and you can totally notice it previously it felt like it it kind of lacked in the mid-range like you know from three to four there was like not much and once it hit four to 45 it really you know started pulling but now that's gone and it just you know, 2,500 RPMs and up, it pulls really well. I know, you know, the numbers aren't the most impressive thing, especially compared to some other YouTubers. 250 horsepower, 275 pound feet, but that's my most powerful car for now until Molly gets her new engine. But that is gonna be it for this video. Huge thank you to Mike and Red Mist Automotive for uh, tuning the truck. If you guys need to get your thing tuned, if you need anything done, uh, hit up 
him. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a like. If you didn't enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a dislike. Um, I think tomorrow we're taking the rail me out to do the dunes if it doesn't rain. So many events that I've been wanting to go to, but every single one is getting rained out. As soon as summer comes along and it stops raining, then we'll have more action going. But I do really want to get these track days and these off-roading events and these drift events going. Also, if you notice, all the drift truck t-shirts are here. And today I'm going to be working on shipping them out. We had a little bit of an issue getting them printed. There were some legal complaints from the, le the, the printing company. We got those all figured out and they are here. So if you ordered a Drift Truck t-shirt, it will be shipped out by the time you see this video. So that's cool. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out and goodbye.